Alaskan photographer Jeff Schultz here, and in this video, I'm going to talk about this cool, cool location. Early this summer, my friend Ward and I were flying in a Super Cub low over this area, which we've flown over many times before, but never this low. And out of nowhere, we found this anomaly of a location. It looked like perhaps maybe during the earthquake, the ground had given way or some such. It was just an odd place for this large number of short waterfalls to be located. But I loved it, so we flew around and round in circles trying to get some picture of it, an aerial shot, really low. I love the Alaska range behind it. But as you can see, it just didn't work out that well. We were on wheels at the time, and so we scouted where we could land another time and come back, but there's just no way to land on wheels or floats out there. It definitely had to be a helicopter thing. So fast forward four months to October, and my friend Bob asked me if I wanted to go flying his helicopter to shoot some image. Maybe there's a particular place I wanted to go. And I thought of this. So it's early October, four o'clock in the afternoon, and we lift off from Merrill Field here in Anchorage and fly west to where we found the spot again. But as you can see, the location is very, very tight, even for a helicopter. And after I first got out of the helicopter, I see this cool scene of a salmon trying to jump the falls. So Bob and I spent the better half of two and a half hours now at this location shooting every which way we could and it was all probably within 50 or 60 feet of, of each other. The light was absolutely great. As you can see in the video here, I'm shooting a real wide 24 millimeter image. At first I just used a small aperture of f22 to get the depth of field I wanted and a graduated three stop neutral density filter on the lens in order to bring the background closer to the foreground. So that made it about a half a second exposure which made the water kind of soaky. And I ended up changing to black and white just to see how that was. But, so as you can see here I backed up even further and I wanted to get even longer exposure, so that's when I put on a five-stop neutral density filter on my Wine Country camera filter system, and I got a 15-second exposure out of it, which I think it looks better, at least in my opinion. I love that silky effect. Some people don't. I do. While the sun was out, I also took the opportunity. I shot 12 vertical frames and used the panorama feature in Lightroom to stitch them together, and then process that final image into this image. Bob and I traded off locations and shot our own compositions. While the sun was out, I made a number of different frames and compositions. As the sun set and got darker and darker, the area was absolutely transformed. Neither of us thought the place would lend itself all that way to, quote, blue hour photos, but it certainly did. We shot for 45 minutes after the sun went down making these images and left after dark. One of my favorite images is this one, shot after sunset. I'm thinking it might even make a calendar image. What do you think? And here's how I processed it. So this is the image as I, as I shot it in RAW. And what I'm going to do now is apply my basic setup, which is right here. You can see that makes it pop out, and you can see over here the clarity has been increased, the vibrance, and the saturation. Now, I'm also going to add just a little bit of dehaze to it, which brings it up. You can see the histogram here. I'm going to bring out the whites a little bit to spread out the histogram. I'm also going to bring the highlights way down, and look what that does to the sky. Then I'm going to bring the exposure up because, as you can see in the histogram, there's a lot of dark stuff there. And I'm also going to bring up the shadows just to get a little bit of information there. So I'm not doing a whole lot to this image. I'm going to add some blacks, sliding it to the left. And then I'm going to use the graduated filter. Even though I used a three-stop hard edge graduated filter, when I shot the image, which gave me a lot of detail up there, it's still not dark enough for me. So I'll just bring that down a little bit and then play with how dark I really want that. Sometimes what I often will do is make it darker than I want and then increase the overall exposure of the image. So that seems reasonable. And let's just saturate it just a little more up there. Let's go bananas on it. 
and that's to Disneyland for me. So we'll back it out just a little bit. And that's a pretty simple, straightforward fix for this particular image. I don't think it needs a lot more. I'm just going to increase the exposure again and call that good. And I'm going to make a virtual copy of this image just so I have a second one. And then for me, there's a lot of this junk here that I don't really care for. So I think it, overall, I'd like to show it to people, at least on my website and such, as a little bit more of a panorama. So I'm going to get rid of that junk. As I always say, the edges and corners are sacred ground. So I'm going to do something like that. I do want to keep this pink cloud there. And I think I'll come off this off the left. This little stuff here just doesn't add anything to it. So if I come off there just a little bit, I think that now this leading line coming down brings me right into the frame. I'm not going to cut off this little clump nor this little spot here. And I think that does the trick. So that's all we need. It's ready to go. I hope you enjoyed this behind the scenes video. Thank you so, so very much for your support on Patreon. I can't do this without you.